In this episode, we'll be renting a car and driving up to the largest hotel in the world, located in the beautiful mountains only one hour away from Kuala Lumpur. New day, new adventure. Today we're renting a car at Europe Car. I'll give you more details about the whole process and pricing on the rental car a little bit later, but now we're gonna go and sign some papers. We just picked up our sweet ride for the next eight days. It's Proton, which is a local make. Let's talk numbers. So this car for eight days, to drive in Malaysia, it cost us 340 Canadian dollars, which was 1100 ringgit. That's just for the car rental and the personal insurance for the driver and the passenger. When I booked it online yesterday, there was no other insurance available to be included. But when we were picking it up today at the office, we had to pay an extra 340 ringgit for theft waiver and the third party waiver. 340 ringgit is 110. Canadian dollars so that would cover us in case something happens to the car they would only charge us 2,000 ringgit which is 560 dollars if it gets stolen or someone bumps into us so it's all covered interesting fact it was pretty hard to find a car and to book it because even though there are quite a few different car rental companies in Kuala Lumpur some of them require either a few weeks in advance to get a car or at least a few days like uh, Avis or Hertz they need at least a few days in advance to be able to prepare the car for you which was definitely not an option for us because we're leaving Kuala Lumpur today and going up to Genting Highlands which is a little bit up so we needed a car that's number one and number two make sure that when you book the car online you specify the location where you're gonna be picking it up and dropping it off most companies allow you to pick it up downtown Kuala Lumpur and drop it off at the airport. We will be leaving on the 24th of uh, January from the airport to go to Vietnam. So we're allowed to drop off the car in uh, Clia, the airport, with no extra charge. Are you ready? Ready to drive in Malaysia for the first time? I'm ready. Left side. Our road trip begins. Driving on the left side was a bit challenging at first, but Jax hasn't done it before, so he had a handle of it pretty quick. Considering the time of the day, we got lucky and didn't have to battle any major traffic. Overall, driving through Kuala Lumpur wasn't very difficult. You do, however, need to be careful, pay extra attention, and always expect the unexpected. Oh my, like this guy going into the oncoming traffic. Once we got on the expressway with fewer cars around, the drive became even easier. The roads are in a great condition, the signage for exit and destination routes is clear. The ride was fun and breezy. One of the things to remember if you're renting a car in Malaysia is that most expressways are toll roads, so be prepared for some additional stops and to pay a little extra. the tolls on highways there are quite a few of them and we just passed two the first one was two dollar fifty ringgit which is 80 cents in Canadian dollars and the second one we actually stopped and we were offered to buy a top-up card the card cost 20 ringgit and 60 cents which is about seven bucks Canadian and it comes with 10 ringgit which is three dollars credit on it so on its own card cost 10 uh, ringgit and 60 cents and then we topped it up with 50 ringgit so right now we have 60 ringgit because the second toll was 6 ringgit so we decided to uh, put some money on it as we will be driving quite a bit around Kuala Lumpur and outside Kuala Lumpur so let's see how this goes next time we can just uh, instead of stopping and paying someone we can just tap and go sounds good Jax say hello to the camera can look at the road, you can be looking at the camera. Yes, 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 very serious driver.
While navigating the highways most of the time is easy, we still manage to take a few wrong turns, even with the help of Google Maps. Is the fancy car you're driving? Молодая седан! Баклажон! А мы туда едем? Нам надо прямо! Where are you going? What is that happening? Can you leave me for a minute? It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, the two. A little bit too. Oh. Oh. Okay. I wish we had such a great shortcuts on our highway. Once you get out of the city, the drive becomes a beautiful, picturesque experience. So much more enjoyable driving when you're surrounded by trees and greenery with stunning mountain views ahead. After about 30 minutes into our drive, we got off the main highway, taking exit to Genting Highlands. The road started winding uphill deeper into the mountains. We keep going up and our ears are popping! I'm not sure how high up this place is but the road just keeps climbing up and up and we need to keep doing this Ooh. it's a very beautiful drive the mountains, the trees Ooh. and very wiggly, like this and this car is having a hard time Keeping up with the roads. Well, we're not the only ones. <laughs> Look at the front. Yeah. Genting Highlands is a forested mountainous area famous for its huge resort world Genting, located at the peak at over 1800 meters above sea level. Because of its geographical location, the local climate is very pleasant. The temperatures are ranging from 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, making it one of the best summer destinations in Malaysia. Visitors come here to escape the heat, enjoy the refreshing breeze and stunning views of lush forests. Approaching the resort, we were impressed by its size. We did find it a bit confusing when it came to parking the car. Google Maps was completely lost, and so were we. After about 10 minutes of cruising around, we were finally able to find our parking garage. In 200 meters, make a U-turn. That one? It should make a U-turn. The check-in process was quick and efficient, considering how long the lineup was. The lobby made quite an impression, even though it wasn't anything chic and modern, but it had a certain charm to it. I've never paid a dollar and eighty cents Canadian for an early check-in. We're checking in almost two hours or even three hours earlier. tell anyone but two nights at this hotel and it seems to be a huge and pretty pretty decent hotel cost us $32 and we got a view view I, we had to compromise and get two beds which we can put together but this way we got to get the view got the view with two beds let's go By the way, they have smoking rooms. There is no balcony, you can actually smoke in the room. We have, we're staying on the 22nd floor. I really want to see the room, which costs $15 a night. That's unbelievable. I hope we're not in for a surprise. So smoking, smoking on every floor? Uh, yes. No, I guess there are different sections because I wanted the queue and I wanted the king size bed and that was not available. The only thing was available uh, was the two beds and none smoking. I said no to smoking and took two beds. What did you? Okay, this is us. 20 second floor. Yeah. 22, 6, 22. 
non-smoking floor. Good to know. This is us. Okay, moment of truth. What? Stay tuned for our next episode, where we're gonna show you the kind of room we got for $15 a night and what else world's largest hotel has to offer. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode.